Okay, well, welcome everyone um, to uh, another TCS Plus talk. Uh, we're very lucky today to have Tasha Paul Saranac from the University of Michigan, who's going to give us a tutorial and a lot of progress that's been happening on Gomery Hue trees in nearly quadratic time. Um, before I begin, uh, let me, I want to encourage everyone to keep their cameras on, give Tasha Paul some like visual feedback throughout the talk. Um, and definitely feel free to unmute yourself and um, ask any questions. Um, yeah, I'm recording this talk. We'll post it on our YouTube page. And two weeks from now, we'll also have Inbal Talgam Cohen, who will talk about algorithmic contract theory. And then just before we begin, let me thank the rest of the organizers. This is quite a big team. Includes Clement Kanon, Rachel Cummings, and India Day, Sumega Garg, Gautam Kamath, Ilya Rajenstein, Oded Regev, Salil Shram, Noah Stevens Davidowitz, Tomas Bidik, and David Weiss. But okay, that's all. And um, I'll leave it to you, Sachapol. Please take it away. Okay, thanks, Eric. So, yeah, uh, so this talk is going to be a tutorial on uh, Gomorrah Ho Tree algorithm in nearly quadratic time. And uh, this is joint work with Amir, Robbie. Jason, Debmaya, and Ohad. Okay, so let me just start right away. So to start with, um, let me note that throughout the talk, all the graph will be un undirected. Okay. And they will have positive weight edge. So like like this graph. And um, the, the first notion we need in this talk is the notion of ST cut or ST min cut. So I will say that a vertex set S is an ST cut. If basically it separate S from T, like this cut. Um, so S is, inside, the S is inside the set S and T is not inside the set. And the weight of a cut is really just a sum of the weight crossing the cut. For example, this cut, it has weight. 10 because it's 1 plus 7 plus 1 plus 1. Okay. And uh, mean cut, ST mean cut is just a ST cut with a minimum weight. Uh, basically, the ST cut, mean cut would look like this in this graph. And here the weight is just 4, it's less than 10. And I will use lambda ST to denote the weight of ST mean cut. Okay. So that's just a notation I will use in this talk. Now we can go right away to Gomery Hu tree. This is like a very um, nice structure. So what it is, informally it's just a single tree that can encode an ST mean cut for every pair, for every pair ST. Okay. So more formally it's, it's a tree like this. Is a tree on the same vertex set as a graph, but it might have different edge set from a graph. It might not be a subgraph. And also we have that for every pair ST, the minimum edge on the ST path in the tree will correspond to ST mean cut in the graph. So that's quite a lot, but let's let's see. So this is this is a graph. And I have compute Gomorrah Ho tree for you. This is Gomorrah Ho tree of this graph. Now that is this is not subgraph, right? Because there is this edge here. There is no edge here. But um, let's see how how can we get some information about mean cut uh, of the original graph from from Gomorrah Ho tree. Let's do some exercise. Well, like let's say that we want to compute st mean cut. Then just look at the path from s to t, right? Now look at the guy who is with minimum weight in the path. So it would be this one. Okay. Now if you delete this edge from, from the tree, you would get two parts. It would separate the tree into two parts. Okay. So this, that's, that's like one part here. But if you look at the same cut in the original graph, this cut will turns out to be an ST mean cut. So 
that's the property what I mean by a mean weight edge correspond to ST mean cut in graph. Let's do another example. Uh, if you want to do TD, uh, TD mean cut. So now the, the, the path look like this. The one with minimum weight is this guy. If you delete this edge, it would disconnect the graph, disconnect the tree into two, these two parts. Look at the same cut here. Again, it's going to be DT mean cut in original graph. Okay, So that's, that's the structure of Gomery whole tree. That's the property of Gomery whole tree. I hope this is clear. OK, so you see that this is quite surprising that like a, um, this structure really exists and it's important too, because first of all, it you see it encodes n square many mean cut value using only n space. So it's really compressed, very nice information into just something very compact. And this is really one of the first specifier for graph cuts. After this, um, like this is discovered 60 years ago, actually. And after that, there are a lot of the development in graph cut specifier. It has a bunch of practical application that I will not go into. For us as a theorist, it immediately implies solution to many fundamental, fundamental graph problem. And the reason is here. If you have Gomery whole tree, someone gave it to you, you can spend like nearly near time pre-processing, like implementing link cut tree on it. And then given any pair ST, now you can actually query for the, the, min, the minimum weight edge along the path. So which means that you can query for the value of ST min cut in just log n time. So, and because of this, it means what? It means that if you want to compute all pairs min minimum cuts value, given Gomery whole tree, you can just do it in n square time additionally. If you want to compute single source min cut, just, you just need n time addi additional in addition. Okay. And because I will actually talk a, a bit more about a single source min cut, let me define it uh, formally next. Um, so single source min cut, it's just a problem where you have a graph and a source S. And all you not want to do is just for every node, you want to compute a value of SV mean cut. So very natural generalization of ST mean cut, right? Just have a source and want to compute ST mean cut for every node V. Okay. So, so you see, um, Gomery Hu tree is very interesting and uh, useful. So naturally we want a fast algorithm for it. And 60 years ago, when Gomery and Hu introduced it, they also give uh, an algorithm for computing it. And that takes n calls to MacFlow. And know that this is non-trivial already because given Gomery and Hu, Given Gomery Hu tree, you can actually recover all pairs mean cut. And if you want to uh, solve all pair mean cut trivially, you would take n, n square MacFlow call. But this takes just linear MacFlow call. And now the history is simple. Uh, after this six, for 60 years, this is still the fastest algorithm. Even for the simple, uh, simpler problem like single source mean cut. Um, and this is where we come in. We, we improve this thing from n to something like sublinear in n MacFlow plus some additional factor. This is in the first version. And after a few weeks after we publish it, we, we observe that actually it's not just sublinear. We can make it polylock MacFlow. Okay. And this also is independently discovered by TNE once uh, he read uh, our first version of the paper too. Okay, so that's the result. And because MacFlow actually can be solved in almost linear time by a recent breakthrough by Chen et al. So now the running time simplified to instead of mn, we get n square 
or almost in an in unweighted graph. So that's our result. And I want just to just note that the fact that there, there were no improvement is not due to the lack of trying. People have tried, but, and we also have tried, and we only can obtain faster algorithm in special case, like in plain, like there are result in planar graph and so on. There are result which is approximate version of Gomery Hu tree or in simple graph. This is the first improvement. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so the goal in this tutorial is to basically show you um, like uh, the idea behind this new result. Our new result actually is based on the ideas in previous uh, works. There are recent line of work here. And what I want to do is to explain nice idea uh, how they progress and how we obtain the last test, latest uh, result that, that I just told you. Okay, so the plan is to start with learning about the main tool, which is called isolating cut. And then we will use this tool to solve a bunch of problems, start from the easy one and to the harder one and harder one. And at the end, we will get an algorithm for solving single source min cut. And I want to note that uh, actually, I will not have time to show you, but actually single source min cut, it turns out that they are, they, it is just equivalent to, to Gomery Hu tree. So one, one direction is simple. If you can solve Gomery Hu tree in time t, you can solve, you can get single source min cut in t plus uh, linear time. As I mentioned, you can just query in times. But it turns out that the other direction is also true. If you can solve single source min cut in t time, you can solve Gomery Hu tree in the same time within polylog factors. Okay. So from now, let's say that our goal is to solve single source min cut. Just, just confirming this is true for weighted graphs, is it? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, feel free to ask questions. Yeah, I, I love questions. Thanks. Okay. So now let's start with the tool, isolating cut. And this is gonna, because this is gonna be something that we will, I will use throughout the whole talk. And I really hope that you get this part because like I, I feel that this is a textbook algorithm. It's both simple and very powerful. It's really the one of the main driving force uh, in the last two years in this line of research. Okay. And before I define the problem, let me, I, I need one more definition. Closest mean cut. So first of all, uh, let's say that now instead of having a node S and a node T, Let's say that I have two vertex set A and B. I can say that a vertex set S is A, B cut. It is separate A and B from each other. That is, uh, A is on one side and B is on completely on another side. Okay. And A, B mean cut is just A, B cut with the minimum weight. Okay. Just a basic definition. And now I will say that S is the closest AB min cut. If basically it's kind of closest to S, two to A in the following sense. If you have any other AB min cut S prime, you, you know that S must be contained in S prime. So for example, suppose that you look at another AB min cut S prime, and it is like this. So this is like kind of far, further from A. So this, this one is not the closest one. Uh, S might, be, might still be a closest one, except that if, if you have another AB min cut that is inside S, then, then this would be a closest one. Okay. So the property of A, the, pro the property of closest min cut is here. First, 
it is actually unique. Okay. Once you set A and B, there is a unique A closest cut. Okay. Um, the reason is that suppose that you have this one, which is a mean cut. And if actually there is another mean cut like this, then the intersection of two mean cut would be a mean, would be a mean cut as well. And because of this, um, you would have that uh, the closest one must be unique because you keep, can keep intersecting, uh, right? And this closest mean cut can be computed in just one MacFlow call plus linear time. So I would just assume that you can compute it. So the problem of isolating cut is now can be defined. In this problem, you have a graph and a terminal set T, the green thing here. And what we want to do is that for every termi per terminal V in T, we want a closest V T minus V mean cut SV. So basically, for every V, we kind of want a cut that's separated from the rest of the terminal. So this SV isolate V from the rest of the terminal. And we call it, that's why we, I can call it minimum V isolating cut. Okay. So more formally, this SV is a V closest V T minus V mean cut. And you see, trivially, you can solve this problem in T calls to MacFlow. Just do it one by one for each V. But what we will do is that we will show, I will show exactly how to do it in log T many MacFlow call. Is the question clear? Good. So now the algorithm. Um, the first step is what I call dimension cut, which will make sense very soon. Um, so the first, that is first I rename each terminal using log T bits. Okay. And for each I, I can say that uh, like um, RI is just all the nodes whose like uh, I bit is zero. And otherwise I call it BI for blue. Okay. This is a red one, this is a blue one just separate them using the i-th bit. And then for each of the dimension i, like or the i-th bit, what I will do is, is just to compute uh, ri bi mean cut, separate the red from the blue side. And let's say that ci is just a cut edge crossing this mean cut. In picture, like a, First, I can define, this is a one with a, a first bit being zero. This is a blue one. And now I compute mean cut separating them and call this C1. Do it for another dimension here, get it to C2. And do it is for every dimension, log T dimension, um, and you get all these cuts. That's the first step. The second step is, is to what I call to get isolating component. So what is this? So basically, let's look at the graph. After you delete these purple edges, after you delete this, the mean cut edges. And for each terminal V, let's look at UV as the component that contains V in the graph after you break it into parts. So for example, this would be U2 because it contains two. Okay. And the first observ observation is that UV would isolate V from the rest of the terminal. That is uh, UV intersect T would be exactly V. So why is that? Well, it must contain V by definition, but it cannot contain any other terminal because if you look at V and other terminal V prime, these two guys must differ at some bit i, right? Because they, they are different name. But if they are different, differ at bit i, 
then they must be separated by C, the cut CI. Okay. So is U, U, UV contain exactly V from the terminal set? That's the first thing. And this is like a kind of clear from the picture too. But now the next lemma, which is the most important about isolating cut is here. The claim is that UV actually preserve the minimum V isolating cut. That is the SV, the thing that we want to find uh, for each V, this SV actually is contained, is, is lying inside UV. So that's that's the that's the next claim, and this actually will follow because of submodality of cut function, uh, which is this inequality. Once you use the fact that S V is the cut closest to V, and um, all of this C C I are mean cut, then you can prove that. Um, it's not hard to prove that the uh, SV will be in, in UV. Uh, it's an easy proof by contradiction. If you assume that SV actually go out, um, SV kind of go out of, of C, I for some I, then there will be some contradiction using this, just using uh, this inequality. But I will not prove it for you. You can try to, to do it at home. Okay. But that's our second claim. Is it clear? This second claim. Okay. So now that's the second step. We 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 have got the isolating component that contains SV for each of the one. Now this last step is just to get this isolating cut that we want. And how to do it fast? Well, for every terminal T. What we do is just construct G for every terminal V, we construct GV. And how to do that? Just contract everything outside the, the component into a single node, TV. Okay. And because we know that this, this isolating cut is lying inside here, and this cut must be still like after in it. This isolation cut that we want to find must be a VTV mean cut in GV as well, because it is just preserved in, in, in the graph. So it means that if you just compute this uh, V closest VTV mean cut in this small graph, you must obtain SV that you want. And we do this for every GV and, comp and get this thing. For every for every terminal v. Okay. So just to summarize, the algorithm is start by computing dimension cut, and that separate the part the graph into parts. Each part is kind of isolate each terminal from each other, and for each each component, you just compute isolating cut inside this small graph. And then you get what we, what you want. And the running time is kind of clear. Um, the first step use log t map flow calls. The second step is kind of simple, just really delete stuff. So uh, linear linear time. And this the last step actually takes a lot of map flow call, but we do it in small graph. Each of these graphs are almost disjoint. Each edge appears in at most two mini graph because they have two endpoints. So that's why the total time in the last step is still at most two time uh, Mac flow calls in the whole graph. Okay. So that's why the total time is something like log, log T Mac flow. Okay. So just to summarize again, Given a graph and a terminal set, you can get this isolating cut, um, the V closest V T minus V min cut. 
for every and we get this for every v in log t my flow calls okay now we have the tool let's try to use it to solve problem um the first application is Steinem in cut and this might be the simplest application so let's see um, now we are here okay. so in this problem Steinem in cut is defined like this you have a graph and a terminal set and what you want is just some minimum weight cut as that separate some pair of terminal from each other So it's, it should be a cut S such that it intersect with T and also like T minus S uh, is also not, this job, not empty. So for example, this cut is of size just one, but it's not, it doesn't really separate terminal from each other. The terminal is a green one. So this is not a Steiner cut. The one which is Steiner mean cut is this one because it separate this guy from, from other green nodes. And you see, like this is actually a generalization of two well-known problem. If T is all the node set, T is just V, this is just global mean cut problem. If T is ST, if T like is contains just two nodes S and T, now this becomes ST mean cut problem. So it's a, a nice generalization of two problems. And we're going to solve this one. So how do, you, how do we solve this one trivially? Well, observe that if you actually fix any terminal A, then you know that a Steiner mean cut must separate A from some other terminal B. So. It means what? It means that the, the weight of, of the cut here is just like a minimizing over all B, lambda AB. And by this expression, we can see that um, we can just compute Steiner mean cut using T many calls to MacFlow. Just use this expression. But yeah, we're going to do it, show you how to, uh, I'm going to show you how to do it using just polylog MacFlow. So um, let's let's solve it. The, um, let's start with the easy case. Let's say that let S star denote some Steiner mean cut. Okay. And the easy case is here. Suppose that S star actually just intersect with the terminal only at one node. Let's say that it's like this. It just intersect T with T just only at node V. So that is it's isolate V from the rest of terminal. But if this is the case, then if you just consider a minimum V isolating cut, right? This one is a minimum cut that, that isolate V. So it means that SV must have size at most at most S star. Because both are both isolate V from the rest. But SV is the minimum one. This just means that SV must be another. Uh, it can be the same as S star, but it, it, it's going to be Steiner mean cut too. Okay. So once you know this, then uh, the algorithm is simple. Suppose that you have a promise that S star intersect T at, at only one node. You know that, you know here, right? That SV must be a Steiner mean cut. So what you do is just you call isolating cut once, and then you just return a minimum, minimum weight cut um, from the isolating cut. Like you have a, you have isolating cut for, 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 for each of the terminal, you just return the one with minimum weight. This one must be as good as S star. So, so you get a isolating cut, uh, you get a cyanamine cut. Okay. 
All right. Now, in general, we don't we don't have a promise that the S star must intersect T at only one node, right? Might be of this thing might have size two to the i. But the simple trick is here. We're gonna try to make it intersect with T all at only one node. So let's say that I define T prime to be the one that obtained from T by sam sample each node in T with rate one over two to the i independently. Like this. And now, so I sample it. And now let's say I forget the rest. Now with some constant probability, you actually know that S star will intersect T prime at just one node because the size of T was two to the I and you sample with red one over two to the I. In the expectation, you should get it to be one. And actually this will happen at least once with high probability if you just try log n times. And if this happened, then this is just an easy case, right? So you just call isolating cut on T prime. And one of the cut will isolate V from T prime, but that cut would be a Steiner cut for original T as well. So that suggests algorithm, which is just for every I start from zero to log T, this corresponds to the guess of the size of S star intersect T. For every I here, just repeat log N times for each reputation, you sample T prime with red one over two to the I, and then you call isolating cut. At the end, you just return among all the cut that you have found from the isolating cut, just return the one with the minimum weight. That would be it. So you see, if suppose that you, this is the algorithm, and if you know, like, if it turns out that S star in Z T has size to the I, just look at the, just look at the iteration I, one of these reputation will be the case that T prime intersect S star has size exactly one. And one of the cut in this isolated cut will be good for you. Okay, so that's the algorithm. And you can see that the whole thing that we do is just to call isolated cut polylock many times. And that is just polylock many max flow calls. You see, this is very teachable, right? Uh, like it might be like even the simplest uh, algorithm for easier problem like global mean cut. By the way, this is randomized. And uh, Jason and Demaya, they show that you can really randomize it using something like expanded decomposition. Um, but I will not talk about it in this talk. Okay. Another thing I want to mention is that it's the general, generality of this algorithm. So this algorithm really just called isolating cut a bunch of times. And the reason behind the fact why isolating cut works is really just because cut function is both symmetric because the graph is uh, undirected. So the cut function is symmetric and this cut function is submodular. So there's nothing specific to the, to the fact that we are working in edge weighted graphs. And because of this, uh, Chandra, Kent, um, Saknik, and the Nupon have already shown that similar, like have shown a similar algorithm for Steiner mean cut in other settings, like for vertex mean cut, hypergraph mean cut, and so on. Okay. So this is like a robust uh, notion that works in many for many things. Anyway, so that's the first application. Let's see, let's go to the next one. The harder one, single source mean cut threshold. So let me define this problem. In this problem, you have a graph, you have a terminal set and a source node and then a threshold. And what you wanna do is that we want to check for every terminal whether the mean cut from S to V is greater than the threshold or not. And trivially, you can solve this using just do like a single source max flow. 
call it t times. And we will do it in polylog flow. So this is a second step now. We are here. And informally, you see that this seems like a harder problem, right? Because, um, because now we, we have to know information about every terminal. Not, we, just, we don't want just one number, one cut. We want to know for every terminal whether the mean cut is large or small. Okay. But formally, um, if you have a subroutine for this, you can just do a binary search on tau and obtain a sign mean cut. So now let's, let's solve this intermediate problem. Okay. And my claim is that whatever the plan is that we will reduce it to some subroutine that I call threshold step. So touch upon just uh... Just confirming, so standard min cut can be used to generate the Goma Rico tree, right? That's the classic algorithm. Mm -hmm. But that takes uh, and a lot, lot more iteration. Yeah. So that's the, so in a sense, that, that's why standard min cut is a natural building block towards getting Goma Rico trees. Yeah, yeah, right. Like it can give Goma Rico tree, it's not fast enough. Uh, but if you, get like a, something like single source min cut, it's going to be fast. OK. So, so the building block to get single source min cut threshold okay, is this thing called threshold step. Um, so let me first define one, one, one set. I call it t small. t small is just all the terminal nodes whose mean cut size is less than, is at most a threshold. So the opposite of we want a list. Yeah. Now, uh, this subroutine threshold step, what it will do is that it will return a subset of T small, a bunch of terminal whose mean cut is small. And the size of D here is gonna be a significant fraction of t small, one over log t fraction of t small. And if you have this subroutine, then, then it's super clear what to do because it returns you a bunch of guy which is small and you want only the one which is large. So the algorithm would be repeat polylog times, call threshold step on t, you get the set d which contains a lot of guy in T small, remove it from your terminal set and repeat. And if you have that, if you do this, like after log in log squares times, I claim that with high probability, the remaining uh, terminals would be such that the mean cut is large. Yeah. And this would be done because this is exactly the, the oldest all the guys that we want to list. Why, why, did, why this works? Just in uh, like a, make it a bit more formal. You know that in each round, um, the size of T small need, will decrease by this much, right? Because we get a bunch of guy in, these, in T small, D, and, um, and D has this size. So in expectation, this T small decrease by this much. So after k many rounds, in expectation, the size of t small is going to be something like it decreased by 1 minus 1 over log t fraction. And you repeat it k times. And you multiply it by, by the initial size of t small. And because k is like a log square, then, then um, um, this is going to be less than poly, poly, no, poly n, 1 over poly n. So with high probability, at the end, T small is empty. So everything that remains has large mean cut. So all I need to show you is how to get this threshold step. And yeah, let's, let's do it. So um, that would be iteration. 
for each i, start from zero to log t. And the first step is to sample from the terminal. Like uh, I just sample with rate one over two to the i and get ri. And I put s into my r, ri too. And then I call isolating cut on ri. So it will be a set, like a bunch of cut that separate red things from the from other red things, right? Each cut isolate red nodes from other red nodes. And some will have cut size less than tau, some has cut size more than tau. So I just look at the one that we that we like um, has small cut size less than tau. And this one I call it fi. And now for everything that is inside every terminal that which is inside the, the, the blue circle here, like this guy, this one, and this one, I just put it into the eye. Okay. And what algorithm return is really just a union of the eye. That's my D. Okay. So First, observe that for every one in the eye, for every terminal, like for every terminal here in the eye, it must be the case that the mean cut from S to V must be less than tau because yeah, it's inside the blue set here. So this is a set that is a cut that separates S from V of and it has size at most tau. Which means what? It means that this guy is in T small. So everything that I return really is in T small. The set D is contained in T small. It remains to show that the set D is big. It's a large fraction of T small. And so we want to show that D is like a one over log fraction of T small. And to show this, actually, we will show instead that the sum of the I is as big as t small. And because this is a sum of log n mini terms, so the union of, of the i is going to be t small over log, log t. Okay. Right. So this is just a, like if the sum is, is, this, is this big, then the biggest, like a maximum the i will have size at least uh, t small over log t. So I will show this instead now. Okay, so if we see that for every term, like mm -hmm. let's look at any terminal V. Question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why does the largest uh, DA has to be the one with less than tau threshold? Like every, every DI, is in this, it's in T small. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so DI is only the ones that have less than tau test. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, good. So what I need to show is that the sum of the I is big. Okay. So now let's how to prove this. Let's just look at any node. V in T small, where the like the mean cut has size less than tau, right? So let's say that SV is the closest, V closest SV mean cut like this. And the size here must be less than tau because it's in T small. Now let's consider this algorithm at the iteration I such that when i is like log of this thing. Okay, so you sample ri. And with some probability, let's look at the event when ri would intersect sv exactly at v. So what is what is the probability that with this will happen? Well, it's like um um like 
you sample V with probability like a one over two to the I, which is one over this thing. And the rest will not be sampled with a constant probability. So, so this will happen with this probability. Okay, but if this happen, what what will what will what will what is good about this? We know that if v if this thing like if S v uh, intersect R i only at v, then S v isolate v from R i. So when we call isolating cut on R i, you will get S v. We get S V. And this thing, this cut has size less than tau, so it will be added into our our set, our family F. And then the whole set, everything in this whole set, every terminal in this set will be added to the I. So to conclude, for every terminal in T small you would add this many nodes, SV intersect T many nodes into some DI with probability one over SV intersect T many, uh, SV intersect T. So in expectation, you add like a constant vertices into some DI. Each V add constant many, constantly many vertices into some DI in expectation. And that really implies that the sum here is at least t small, right? Because each node in, in t small con con contribute a constant thing, constant contribution to this sum in expectation, right? So yeah, um, with this, uh, we really get that um, we have the algorithm, we just we call threshold step log square many times. For each time, we like for each threshold step, it's just called as a link cut log n many times. So in total, this is like polylog max flow. Okay. Question about, about this. Okay, good. So now we arrive at a final step, uh, which is maybe the the the, the most uh, technical part is to compute single source mean cut. So it's the same problem, except that now we don't have a threshold. We really want to compute a uh, mean cut value from S to V for every terminal uh, V. We want an exact value, not just a threshold. And the trivial time is, is linear Mac flow. And what we can do is that we can get it like polylog Mac flow plus something here. So now we are here at this point. There are actually two main components uh, to compute single source mean cut in our new paper. One part is called computing guide trees. I will define it soon, but it's some useful trees. And once you have guide trees, we will compute single source mean cut using these guide trees. Okay. This part is really something that I will omit. Um, the idea is, is really just to compute Steiner tree packing using multiplicative weight update and dynamic algorithms. Um, and we'll use dynamic algorithm from, from this paper. So it's kind of it's nice, but uh, it's not as new as um, I think. The new thing is here, and I will focus on this now. So, but if you give, if you have two algorithms, then the total time is just the sum of the two, and that's how we get the single source mean cut. So, just to recall, uh, isolate. I I will use again isolating cut, right? Um, is an algorithm that I, like for every terminal, it isolates a terminal V from the rest of the terminal. Now there is like a, a, like a general 
general, more general version of this. That is instead of terminal is a set of vertices. We can say that is a terminal is a family of set. Let's say that now I define terminal sets to be a family of set A1 up to AT. Like this is A0, A1, A2, A3. It's not an, a single node anymore. It's just a, a set each of the A. And using basically almost the same algorithm, really just like you just contract each of these A to one node, really. <laughs> yeah. Then um, what you can get is that you will get that each of the isolating set, isolating card will separate, will isolate each of the AI from the rest of A's. Yeah. So SI is going to be AI closest AI T minus AI min cut. And we can do it in log T time. Okay. So, so keep that in mind. I will use it. And now uh, a single source min cut given guide tree. This problem is defined as follow as following. Um, you have a graph, you have a terminal set and a source. And now you have a guide tree. We will see soon what is this. And the goal is the same, just to compute single source min cut. Now, note that like now I use terminal as u because uh, t is now for, for the tree. So for every terminal v in u, we want to compute single source min cut. Now, what is this guide tree? It has the following property. First of all, it might not be a subgraph of graph of, of G. It's just some, some tree, really. And, but it will span the terminal set U. But the nicest thing about this guide tree is here. This thing is really like a thing that, that we highly exploited. Um, so for every uh, terminal V, right? There will be an SV min cut that cross the tree only once. Uh, let's see this example. So, like in some sense, the tree kind of kind of restrict how the min cut would look like. So, for example, this is the node V, and this cut would this cut cross the tree only once because it cross it here, right? This thing cross it here. If you look at some other cuts like this, it looks a bit more crazier. And this thing cross the tree like a four times, one, two, three, four. This is like a kind of harder, like a more complicated structure. And the tree here guarantee that like for every terminal V, there is a SV bin cut that cross the tree only once. Um, actually, uh, in our real paper, like the actual guide tree is a bit weaker. Instead of one respect, you, you have you have four respect. It's still some constant, but it's not one. And uh, this is not true for every terminal v, but for it's true for when 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 the min cut is small. Anyway, this is not really the point. Like given this thing, you will see that that the um, like even after assuming this, you will get like a main main idea of the, the algorithm. Is it uh, one respected by the uh, closest uh, V closest SV min cut? No, or this is just sum. Some like is. there is some SV min cut that one respect the tree. Okay. And what is the vertex set of the tree? Is it V or U? The vertex set of V, um, my, it might not span the, the, the graph. So it spans U, it might, be, it might contain something else, but it might not span the whole graph. Okay. So Tachopong, is, yep. the, is the difference between these guide trees and the original Gomery hue tree that this only works for the source S? Um, so, the Gomori Hu tree is the is is a, is a tree such that um, 
um, it encodes the the mean cut value, right? This tree doesn't really have weight on it or anything. This tree really just restrict how how some of the SV mean cut would look like. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. More question. Okay. Actually, I just see that I'm kind of out of time, right? Uh, is it should, when, when I should stop, actually? Is it... I mean, you can keep going until one, I guess. We have like maybe okay. five more minutes. All right, sure. The vertex set of the tree is not the entire vertex set. Then what do you, what do you mean by uh, one respecting? So, so how do you map a cut in the from the graph to a cut in the tree? I mean, so by I I don't need to like I really just count like let's say that we we have a we have a cut in the graph, right? And now I really just count how many times the tree edge uh go out from like a how many times that the tree edge go go out from like cross the cross this cut but so what is this cut in the tree i need to map the cut from the graph to a cut into the tree no like count. let's say that this is a cut let's say that it is the cut and let's say that my tree has just two nodes then this tree cross the cut once if the tree looks like this then the tree cross the cut twice because this is it cross it once it cross again here. Yeah. That's my definition of one respect or two respect. I really just count how many times the tree cross cross the cut. Make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So now the now this is gonna be like a, the main algorithm. So let let me at least uh, stay the algorithm and show you pictures. Yeah. Okay. So the algorithm is like this. Uh, it's called guy tree cut. What it does is that it will compute some estimate of mean cut SV for every node in, in, in the tree. But what is nice is that this estimate is actually is going to be correct for every node in the terminal. And the algorithm is here. First of all, if the tree is small, it has just constantly many nodes, then what we can do is just compute for every SV, compute as like assign the estimate correctly just by computing SV mean cut. And this just to compute this is just take max flow time. And we are fine with spending max flow time. So that's the best case. But the tree might be big. So what we will do is that we root the tree at a centroid, like here, centroid of the tree. And let's say that UI, U1, U2, U3 here is a is a children of a centroid. And let's say that this TI are the sub tree rooted at the chai at each chai of a centroid. This is T1, T2, T3. And because of this is a centroid, the, by the property of centroid, we have that the number of nodes in TI is like half of the number of nodes in tree, in the, in the original tree. So that's the first step. Now the second step is here. We call isolating cut in like a, a terminal set version. That is, my first set is T1, my second set is T2 and T3, and the last set is the terminal, is that centroid. And what we would get is just some cut for each I, we get a cut that isolate TI from the rest of, of the node in the tree. So, we get SI such that is a TI 
uh, t minus t i in cut. And with this, we can define our how how we recurse. So for each i, I just define g i to be the graph that contain like a s i and everything else is contracted to, into one node. And call this contracted node R I. But now, if this if this part doesn't contain our original source S, I just rename this thing as S. Okay. And the the T prime I is just T I here, plus one edge, then edge from from U I to the source. And do this for every I. Like we we get S I contract everything outside into one node and name it S. Now this one, con you contract everything outside into one node, but this one contains original source S. So we, we don't name this thing as S. And now, and, and now I will just compute this estimate recursively on each of the GI, TI prime. Okay. So now that each of the TI prime contains some source, so this is really the same problem in a smaller graph. And once we are done with this, uh, I just um, I just defined my estimate to be S, my, my estimate of mean cut SV to be like this. That is, if V is in the same part as a source, then like uh, I really just set my estimate to be the one on GS, the, the GI that contain S, the estimate of in my recursive um, uh, instance. But if now let's say that the V is not in the same part of S, then I will take it as a minimum between two numbers. That is between minimum of my estimate from V to this source and minimum between S to this uh, to this RS. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of out of time. Um, so, so first, let me like go through very quickly in five minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the talk will be recorded anyway, so maybe it's just good for posterity and if people okay. need to go, they can watch it online. Okay, cool, cool. That's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. So, so at least I hope that um, the statement of the algorithm is kind of fine. Um, and um, for the time analysis, this, this is an easy part. So you can see that what I do, the time given G and T, what I do mainly is just to call isolating cut in step two here. And then I just recurse on each GI, TI prime, right? But we know that the recursion depth would be log n because the size of TI, the size of the tree, basically shrink by half every time. Because this is a, this is a, we, we, we take the centroid here. The size of the tree shrink. And once the size of the tree is like a constant, we, we are done. We go to the best case. We spend max flow time. So recursion level is log n. And each instant is the same recursion level. They are almost disjoint. Each edge appears in at most two GI. So because of this, the total time is going to be polylog uh, isolating cut, which is polylog max flow. OK. And now um, we will have that. Um, what what remains that we need to prove is is that um, the uh, the estimate is correct. Okay. And um, the reason is correct is that so. Okay. So note that for for each node v here, we just what we do is that we just we just take the estimate in between V and, and, and the source 
in in the graph that contains V. And this is the estimate in GI. And take a minimum, take the minimum between this one and the estimate between S and this guy in GS. Okay. This, uh, take the one, the estimate in the graph that contains original source. Okay. So that's how we set my our estimate. And Actually, it will be the case that we actually know that the mean, the real um, mean cut value is going to look like this. So really correspond to how we set the estimate. Okay. So because of this, and um, let me actually um, fresh through this very quickly. And basically, this is going to be true because um, because if you 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 have that if this is a if this is the terminal, then you have that this the the cut the mean cut that that cross the the tree will cross it only once, and you actually you will, you can show that there will be a mean cut that cross the tree only once, and actually is preserved inside the SI. So that's that's the whole that's the, the key thing. Basically, if the mean cut cross the if the mean cut cross the tree only once, you actually know that there must be a mean cut that cross the tree only once and actually is preserved in in our recursive instance. Okay. How to prove this? We use submodality of a cuts again. And how exactly uh, is like uh, you can look at this or, or look at a paper. And because the, the cut is preserved. Now, once you once you recurse, you you you're good. Okay. Anyway, um, to summarize, we can solve this single source mean cut given a guide tree in polylog time, in polylog map flow. And with this, we get single source mean cut. And because single source mean cut is equivalent to Gomery whole tree, we get an algorithm for Gomery whole tree with this time. Okay. So what I hope for you to, to get from this talk actually really is not about the new result, but really to learn about it's kind of the new framework for reducing problem to max flow. Okay. Isolating cut to me seems like a powerful reduction framework to max flow. We know before that many, many problems can be reduced to max flow that are basic. Uh, classical um, reduction, like a bipartite matching, destroy part, and system graph, they all reduce it to max flow. This is known a long time ago. There are more modern reduction via cut matching game that reduce passes cut, balance cut, expanded decomposition to max flow. This is like a new new thing that is really young, like it's just, just um, two years old. And it's powerful enough to reduce a lot of things to max flow. Um, and we have learned at least explicitly about these three things in this talk. So I, I think it's exciting and I encourage you to look at uh, it or, or find more application. And let me end with uh, quickly with a uh, open problem. So the hope is to get Gomery whole tree in polylog map flow time. And uh, we did it at least in undirected graph, uh, unweighted graph. Can we do it in weighted graph? Right now we have this additive n square thing, right? I think we can do it actually, um, but it's a work in progress. Another nice question is, can we make it deterministic? All the steps here is like a randomized. So, but beyond edge cuts, can we get Gomery whole tree in like a polylog max flow time in hypergraph? Or like uh, for what about vertex cut? Not even Gomorrhean whole tree, but just getting one, like a minimum cut, a global minimum cut in the vertex setting, vertex capacity setting. This is not known. Like the best known in unweighted case is good now. Like um, it's almost linear. But once the graph have vertex capacity, the best known is still MN. For directed graph, 
um, the best known is root and MacFlow. So things are like kind of not well understood beyond edge cuts. And I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, thanks, Dr. Paul. <laughs> yes, we, we can take questions. Small question about the definition of those uh, sets at SI, the minimal sets that uh, disjoint things. In your uh, figures, it seems like they are disjoint, but they can overlap, no? That is that they're outside of the terminal set. Oh, actually, um, it would it will turn out to be disjoint too. Okay. Um, you mean this, uh, which, okay, let's. All the Go orange to... stuff, the SI will sets. Yeah, this SI, because this SI are computed using isolating cut. Mm -hmm. um, so they will be disjoint from each other. From what I understood, the SI disjoints the terminal vertices from the terminal vertices outside of it, yeah. but it contains also other vertices. Right, but yeah, and also I, I understand your question, but it, it will be strong in the sense that even like non-terminal vertices will be disjoint from each other. Okay, thanks. Sure. Paul, where is the n squared coming from in the weighted case? Right. Good. So the n squared is from here. Let me go to the slide. Oh. So basically, we use multiplicity weight update, and uh, there will be n many rounds. And on, on each round, you spend n, n time, linear time, um, to compute a minimum standard tree. So like you can specify the graph so that the graph is sparse, so it has only n, n edges. So you spend n times per round, but there are still n many rounds. In, in the unweighted case, you can use the dynamic algorithm to, to say that even if there are n many rounds, um, each round, uh, you 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 have like a you have dynamic algorithm so that total the total time is still fast. You mentioned that uh, the guide trees that you get are uh, slightly weaker. Yes. Uh, so they are only four respecting, right? Yes. Uh, can you go to the definition of your guide trees? Yes, definitely. Oh no. Came out. So for respecting, how do you handle that? So yeah, the the so idea is here. Yeah, it's kind of thing is cleaner for the uncrossing for respecting. Yeah. So the idea is that um so suppose somehow that um that I have supposed oh no, sorry. Suppose that I, this is a cut, and let's say that the tree um, kind of look like, like this. Uh, so it kind of for respect, right? Um, so the point is that now, if I somehow just throw away some part of the tree, let's say that I just throw away this part of the tree, now it now become too respect. So the, the idea is that sometimes you are willing to just throw away some part of the tree so that the number like the number of time that the, the tree cross the cut is reduced. So like because previous like in the previous literature you we always use like a spanning tree, right? And you cannot just throw away some part of the tree. Now we, we don't need that the tree need to be spanning. 
if you just throw away some part of the tree, um, um, now now you get like better um, number of crossing. So the, 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 the trick in the paper is really just, okay, uh, try to try to randomly um, throw away some part of the tree and hope that now is, is, is a bit better in the number in number of crossing. I guess I should see the paper. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like the, the the proof is actually like a quite short. Like yeah, uh, yeah. But that's that's the kind of the conceptual idea behind it. You you can throw some some part of the tree out, and uh, yeah. So maybe this is not directly related, but uh, one use of Gomery Hood trees is to is to compute uh, T odd cuts. Broad cuts. Not sure if it's familiar. Yeah, I guess you're familiar. So, is there a shorter way to solve Minot cut without going through Gomery Hood trees? Mm. Can we? Is it? Is there a simpler reduction from? Yeah, interesting question. To polylog max flows. Interesting question. Um, I, I, I need to say, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, right now we, we pay a bunch of polylog. Um, basically, like, like actually- In a sense, can we, can we solve the weighted setting without the additive and squared for Minot cut? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um. Because one way to solve Minot cut is to first solve Steiner cut. If it turns out to have odd number of terminals on both sides, then you're happy you've mm -hmm. done it. Otherwise, you recurse. But this is going to be slow. Right. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good question. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.